You're listening to another ambitious entrepreneur network.com podcast, the voice for entrepreneurs and small business. Now onto the show. Welcome to the Christian Entrepreneurs Podcast, daily conversations with Christian entrepreneurs to inspire and empower Christian business owners to walk strongly in their faith, while build a thriving business that honors Him in every way. Now, over to your host, Anne Marie Cross. And welcome to another episode of the Christian Entrepreneurs Podcast. This is episode eight. And yes, I'm your host, Anne-Marie Cross, brand and communication strategist, also known as the podcasting queen. Now, your body is the only body you have, and it needs to carry you right through until the end of your days, which is why my guest today is so passionate about sharing her message around how we must take better care of ourselves across the five dimensions of health. Joining me on today's show is Kitty Ching. Kitty was born in Hong Kong, and she immigrated to Melbourne when she was 14 years years of age. Her personal health and her family her familial issues guided her towards studying health, well-being and psychology and further led her into her wellness coaching and nutrition specializing in weight management and in the last seven years her business has allowed her to help hundreds of clients reach their wealth wellness and their weight goals as well as discover their life purpose by following their inner compass kitty is dedicated to making a difference adding value to business owners and professional people in the corporate world by helping them to understand how they can live a happy healthy and fulfilled life. Now on today's show, Kitty is going to share tips on how we can have a healthy lifestyle. The importance of holistic well-being and the five dimensions of health. She's going to share what each of those is and more on how we can really optimize them, as well as key learnings about true wealth. Your first wealth, of course, is health, and then true wealth has to be created from the inside out. So welcome to the show, Kitty. Thank you, Emery. It's um, so good to be here. It absolutely is. Now, you shared in your introduction that your personal health and familial, I, I just about couldn't get that out. There's something about the, the, the letter L that I kind of get stuck on. Anyway, my daughter said it's got to do with my neck. I need to do more exercises. But anyway, if we look back to um, what prompted your interest in this, it was back when you were obviously yourself, you went through some health issues as, as well. Is that kind of what prompted you into now doing what you absolutely love, which is to help other people with their health and wellness too, yes? Yeah, definitely. Well, I was actually born with a hole in my heart, which is um, a congenital heart defects and um, it's sort of basically separating the heart chambers. Mm -hmm. Because of that, I was never able to do any kind of exercise and I was always unwell and you know, I just felt that I was never good enough. And my two brothers, um, they were amazing in their sports skill, their athletic abilities. And so because of that, I realized that I really, you know, had the value of wanting to be, uh, you know, learning more about health. So mm -hmm. I took it upon myself to do that. After I had my surgery, I started, you know, building up my health and my wellness. And the familial side of this is actually about my dad, as well as a lot of my family members. Mm. My dad, he was a very, very successful and wealthy businessman, yet he was always unwell as well because he would spend 80 to 100 hours a week building his business, mm. yet he was I would say socially, physically, and spiritually bankrupt in the way that he was never really there for us kids to spend time with us. And he also was overweight, obese, and he had all sorts of um, you know, illnesses. Mm -hmm. And he died at a young age of 52 of cancer. So all of this, um, you know, with a lot of my other um, family members who've also had um, you know, health issues as well as um, obesity and stuff like that caused mm -hmm. me really be passionate about learning about nutrition, about weight management, about health. Yeah, fantastic that you can do that. And, you know, sometimes the the challenges that we see, well, perhaps we go through ourselves or we see loved ones go through can often 
really be the impetus that we think we need to speak up against this or we need for this and help people become far more empowered because often and we're going to talk about the five dimensions of health when we're so focused on one or two areas we forget that there are other areas of our life too and in this instance the five dimensions of health that we don't want to um, neglect other areas because they can often impact negatively on what what we're doing that's doing so well and we can be even better so let's talk about some tips to having a healthy lifestyle what are some things that you can share with us today that'll help us to just think differently and and obviously behave differently in what we're doing yeah sure well um i'd like to maybe just share uh, three different tips to start off with in terms of what i call the health triads when i help my clients to be healthier the first is healthy eating which is the nutrition side of things um when it came uh, when it comes to me you know, learning about uh, you know nutritional specialist um area i always find that people don't actually focus on eating well because you know we are just so busy these days and so i find that you know making a huge difference to our overall well-being we do need to look at you know healthy eating mm. so you know in terms of the kind of food or kind of um uh, the amount of food and the time that we eat we need to be aware of as well so that is the first part in terms of tip um, you know, on nutrition is do not eat when we are tired or emotionally upset mm -hmm. or create, you know, a relaxed environment when we're eating. And um, I also share a lot about psychology of eating as well, because, you know, when we're psychologically or, or you know, um, emotionally upset, then we need to really look at that side of things so that goes to you know what i talk about the um, five dimensions is the mm -hmm. other dimension they're all connected yeah and, yeah um, yeah and so when we're thinking, I mean, that's a great tip. I mean, how often do we turn to emotional eating and when we are feeling down or tired mm. and what we might end up, instead of just having a small portion that would be, we end up eating everything, you know, in that, in that and then we end up beating ourselves up. And I guess as children of God, I mean, one of the key areas is that, um, I mean, we are the, the temples of the Holy Spirit, if you will, and says so in the Bible. So we want to make sure that we look after ourselves because for many of us who do want to to make a lot a difference in the lives of many people by bringing a message the message that we're so passionate about uh, if we're not healthy and feeling well in, inside then that's just going to inhibit us in, in getting that message out so what what kind of things if someone's listening today or watching today and recognizes that there, when it comes to, to, to healthy lifestyle and eating specifically, that that hasn't been the best. I mean, often when we're changing our habits, we want to do that in a way that's going to support us and not drastically changing because then we just lose, you know, become overwhelmed. But what would be a couple of key steps that people could start to take that support them in being able to make long, you know, long-term changes that really will support them? Yes, um, when I talk about the five dimensions of health, I like to use an anchor action. So mm -hmm. when you think about an anchor, it goes up and then down and then outward, right? So basically how it works is like going from up onwards is the spiritual mm -hmm. and then the mental is our mind and then emotional is the third dimension. Mm -hmm. which obviously is what we were talking about, the healthy eating, the exercise, the rest and restoration and then so social because mm -hmm. it's so important for us to have good relationships with others in order to be holistic, um, you know, holistically healthy and totally well. Mm, yes. So let me just, I'm just writing those down just to make sure I've got them all correct. So you've got the spiritual, the emotional, the mental, the social and the physical. Were they the five? That's it. Let's talk about uh, firstly the, well, which is your favourite one to talk about first? I just want to dive into, just give a little bit of, of a snapshot on how we can really ensure that um, this particular dimension of our health, we're taking care of ourselves and then there may be, you know, a couple of key steps. So which one do you want to dive into? Well, let's talk about the spiritual one first since you mentioned that first. Yeah, maybe yeah. even share what do you do as part of your uh, five areas of, you know, how five dimensions of health and the spiritual. Do you do some, you know, practices every day or one weekly or what? Share with us. What do you do to ensure that in the spiritual dimension of health, you're really taking care of yourself? Yep, certainly. Well, in terms of spiritual health, I make sure that I spend time in 
consistent devotion, spending quiet time every morning before I actually even do anything with my work in acknowledging, you know, the presence of God through prayer, mm -hmm. through meditation on the word of God on the Bible. Mm -hmm. And I love journaling. Like when I journal, I really know that I can listen to God and I can share my heart with him at the same time. So that's sort of a, a two way communication. And the other thing is fellowship with other Christians like you and I are doing, Amory. It's mm -hmm. so important for us to be able to support one another in our faith journey. Yeah. So that is the spiritual health. Um, you know, to be able to build my faith and also my um, spiritual well-being. Yeah, you know, it's really interesting. I, I really enjoy uh, in the mornings spending time with God too. But every now and again, and it is starting towards the end of this uh, month, yeah. I have a personal trainer and the program starts again. So sometimes then I'll have to go and do that because that's also very important. But I do make sure that when I come back that I do, you know, read the Bible, spend time in prayer because it sets me up for the day. But what that goes to show is no matter what time of day, some people are not morning people, some people are afternoon or evening people. It is really making sure committing it into and putting it into your diary, isn't it? Otherwise, if we just, well, whenever I get time, time just doesn't come. We have to make time, especially for this, you know. Have you found that to be true too? Oh, yes. I mean, what gets scheduled gets done. And so I make sure that, like, I actually have the time set aside for doing the things that are important. Yes. So. Yeah, absolutely. So that's the spiritual. Then the emotional. Share a little bit about maybe some of the insights of things that you do, maybe even some of the things that you've some of your clients have done to really help them ensure that the emotional dimension of health is really supporting them. Yeah, well, in terms of emotional, I always talk a lot about self-care, self-love and self-compassion mm -hmm. because in order for us to be emotionally well and support others, we need to be well first. So oxygen mask is something that I talk about, which is basically like, you know, in order for us to be able to help others, it's like in the plane where they have this announcement, you know, put your own oxygen mask on before assisting others. So yes. if we are able to do that emotionally, we'll be calm cool and collected to be able to help others yeah you know what's really interesting when you say that i mean how many of us and, and we are nurturers we're heart-centered people and we love to support other people some of the things that we say to ourselves not not out loud often but in our own mind you know the inner critic if we were to voice that and say that to someone else, our loved one or friends, you know, our community, there is no way that we would utter some of those words. So what an encouragement that you would share this today to say, would you say what you often, what we say to ourselves, if we're being honest, would we say that to someone else? No. no. So why would we say that to ourselves? Because we are all created, you know, in his image. He loves us. You know, our identity is in him. So why would we put ourselves down if we wouldn't dream of putting someone else down when we start to think about that it really is quite wow a bit of a, a change in, in mindset isn't it when we when we ask that question that's right and i love what you have um, shared with me about you know stopping the inner critic when that happens we just let them go and not let that affect us so that's yeah. all yeah, absolutely. And you know, I think what's so great about talking about each of these key areas is because I think everybody is individual. And if you were to ask everybody, you know, which areas do you feel strong in and that you think I've got that covered and what areas perhaps could you have support in or more support and you would like to, to improve, that it's, it's often when we struggle in certain areas, when we see, okay, I really can see like for emotional sake, um, I can see that my language, what I'm saying to myself and what I'm allowing myself to listen to and that inner critic, if I allow him or her to continue speaking negatively, you can see how that's going to impact you. And then that will infiltrate other areas of our dimensions of health too. Do you find that as well? Oh, definitely. But these five dimensions are so interconnected to each other. And if one is not being totally well then it definitely will be you know affecting yeah. the other. Yeah. so it's so important for us to be having a balanced and having this um what i call juggling you know the yes yes, yes. Yeah. and i love and we'll share with everybody um how people can get a copy of your book and you've actually written um the book about juggling all of those um the, the five areas so then we're talking about the mental dimension of health speak a bit more about this 
Okay, well, with mental health, I really love this scripture in Romans that talks about be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So mental health is basically about the mind, the health of the mind. And I personally love doing, you know, the meditation of the word of God and also mm -hmm. mindfulness practice, which basically is to be present in the moment and mm. so that we are able to just not really regret about the future or I mean I regret about the past and uh, worry about the future so mental health obviously is something that we need to be working on like you know supporting what we want to you know uh, achieve in terms of like reading books and all that is also part of it yeah i think um the mental dimension of health is so important i mean you only need to read or watch listen to the media and you realize just how many people even christians who are really struggling with mental health and uh, you know that bible verse that you quoted is so important we need to re renew our minds and i think when we talk about the enemy um that is where he, they, he really is um pushing up against i mean when we're feeling overwhelmed anxious worried concerned so much that it it often consumes us we know that we don't have to carry that burden we can bring it to prayer lay it to you know at the foot of the throne and have that be be handled what would you say to someone who really is struggling around the area of um, of mental health? What well, would, I mean, obviously, the, the, the verse and prayer is important, but let, let's dive into and, and unpack this a bit. Okay. Well, I have to be um, honest with you. I personally struggled, you know, with really uh, dis being discouraged, being disappointed, and even, you know, having depression because mm -hmm. of the fact that, like, let's say when my dad died, when I was very young, and then all the different things, you know, the difficulties that I've been through. But mental health is an area where if we are able to just focus on the task at hand and not let, you know, the other areas of overwhelm, you know, mm -hmm. uh, overwhelm us then we won't be able to let that um you know affect us as much so for me practicing mindfulness um is a new thing that i've done for the last four years that definitely have helped me a lot so how that goes is um i i talk about you know you can go through a practical exercise called mindful stop so s-t-o-p S stands for slow down. So if you slow down yourself when you're feeling mentally really irritated or like, you know, having negative thoughts, mm -hmm. then you slow down and take some deep breath. And then T stands for take note. Take note of your feelings and your thoughts and just leave it all to God and pray and, you know, just not let that affect you. And then um, O stands for observe your own feeling and also being able to observe it just like like a sushi train i like to use that method um like i've got a mindfulness coach that teaches me that so as you know all these negative thoughts and feelings that come about just let that like a sushi train go away mm. then he is to pursue your values and that's a wonderful thing once we know who what our values are as we pursue them then you know the issues that we have will slowly disappear yeah, I love that. And I think that's so important. Slow down, take note of what we're feeling, our thoughts, what's going on for us, observe our own feelings. And I love that sushi train, just let it go on by, release that, and then pursue our values. Often what happens with, with our thoughts, they are so quick. And I know that I've done this in, in the past as well, where you'll have a conversation with someone, what she's going to say, or he's going to say, then I'm going to say this, and then you, and you have this, and it's like, stop. Do you just realize what you're doing? And you're having this whole conversation and it's like it probably will never happen and often it really doesn't but we can have just this chatter with so many things going on that this mindfulness it is slow down stop take note of what's going on and then you know when we when we submit it to prince say please lord just let you know handle this for me then we can realize you know what stop because this is just bs i'm not listening to it go away you know in the name of jesus i am just not putting up with this and that's such a great principle to be able um to do that for, for sure so that's the mental so we've spoken about spiritual we've spoken about emotional we've spoken about mental dimension of health the next is social you mentioned it was so important 
to be able to relate to others, you know, um, create a community of like-minded people who can support for you. What, what, um, what sort of insights do you want to share around the spiritual, sorry, the social aspect of dementia of health? Yep, certainly. Well, with the social side of things, and I find that, you know, people that are well are not only physically healthy, they mm -hmm. are socially connected to each other as well. Mm -hmm. So being able to connect with people, to have a community support around us, mm -hmm. or even accountability is so important um, in order for us to be having the total wellness so to me um whether it's like you know, going to uh, you know a friendship group to my church or my support group in my business or even just my family and friends circle all of that is so important uh, for me to be healthy Yes. And I think one of the things that um, we'll often say, and I, one of the guests uh, just recently uh, mentioned that, you know, we are often um, the combination of the people that we associate ourselves with. And so it's such a great um, opportunity for us, time for us to, to do an audit, if you will, of who am I hanging around with? Are there groups, are there um, groups of, of people that I'm hanging around with or even individuals that are not speaking? truth and in life in, into what I'm doing, not so supportive. And so sometimes it's, it, it really is so important for us to seek a community who will uplift, who will be there to support us no matter what. Have you found that is important for you too? Oh, I have. Like, you know, I've had times where I was um, feeling discouraged and, you know, things don't turn out the way that I wanted them to be. But I always have a group of really close friends that would support me and I can go there all the time to share with them. And when that happens, then, you know, all the issues seem to be disappearing. Yeah. So it's amazing. Yeah. yeah. I know a lot of us now, uh, and, and myself included, have a lot of different connections online, so through yes. social platforms and, and so forth. And for, for people, and I'm going to ask a question which may seem a little bit strange, but how many of us are afraid to ask? Like if they don't have a community and you see a number of people that you know you can meet face-to-face -face because you're in the, the same municipality or it's not going to take too, too long. Speak a little bit about encouraging them to, to, to reach out and ask them, hey, would you be interested in joining a support group? Because so many of us might be fearful of doing that in case someone says, oh, no, I'm too busy or something like that. Um, did you ask you know, some of these groups that you attended, how did you go about finding the right kind of support groups for you that enabled you now to really get the support uh, from them when you need it and obviously offer support to, to them too when they need it. That's right. It's obviously a mutual thing. Like, you know, when you're asking for support, you need to give support as well. And that's what a, a good relationship is always. But um, yeah, for me, I don't um, have any hesitation in um, you know, asking to be in a group if I find that that's what I feel called to. Because a lot of times, you know, obviously you may not know whether a group is um, ultimately suitable for you. But if you don't ask, if you don't try to be in that group, then you will never know. So to me, um, there's always something that sort of attracts me when I see a group or like a community or even, you know, a, a friendship group or even just a friend. Um, you will be able to see something about them or about that person that you will be attracted to. I mean, that's what I always find. And then I will be taking the initiative to um, connect with them. So I think that's very important for those people that are listening to this um, podcast. If you're feeling a bit lonely, if you're feeling isolated, which I can tell you I have been, you know, in different times of my life, mm -hmm. but I've learned that it's so important to be reaching out to others. Yes. And ask. And maybe they are um, at, in a stage or a season in their life that they are busy, but it doesn't mean that it's a personal rejection to us. It just means that they are busy because sometimes, again, and that inner critic can then say, well, you see, you're not worth it. They don't want to hang out with you, which that is a lie. Okay. But it's as important to, to find that support. And, um, and of course, you know, the Be The Difference uh, movement community, if, if you're struggling, join that. Kitty is part of that and will certainly, um, you know, love to, to support you. Let's talk about key learnings about true wealth. And you say that your first wealth is your health. True wealth has to be created from the inside out. Share a bit more about this. Yes, well, that's really my motto. Yeah, true mm. wealth is um, health because if you don't have any health, then wealth is 
of no value. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I shared a little bit earlier on about my dad already. He had a lot of financial resources, but he was never healthy mm -hmm. in the other dimensions of health. So to me, that's become my motto. And there is also this saying that your health is your wealth as well. Mm -hmm. So basically, it has to be from the inside out in the sense that if you have all the money in the world, but if you're not happy, if you're not fulfilled, and if you're not living a life of purpose and passion, then what's all the money in the world do? Like, it's just not going to be fulfilling for you. No, no. So, and when you, when you said, um, you know, that your father passed away at the age of 52, I mean, I'm 50, that's two years away. And I feel like my life is just getting started. You know what I mean? And it's like, wow, it's so important. But I so agree. If you have all of the money in the world and all of the success in the world, yet you don't have your health, which is your greatest asset, your body, as you say, okay. then um, unfortunately, all of those things are just not going to, to matter, particularly if, um, you know, your lifespan is, is shortened. So Kitty, share a little bit more about the incredible book that you've just written. And I know you're doing, you're writing another one, but let's talk about this one first and then share with people how how they can get in contact with you. Great, thank you. Well, my book is called Juggling Health and Wealth. So in it, I shared about what we've talked about today as well, which basically how you can juggle. And I have the concept that is so important for us to balance before we juggle. Mm. So the three key components is how you can unlock your wealth, how you can nurture your health, which you know uh, is through the five dimensions of health that we've discussed a bit, and also you know how to find your flow. And that's an area that I find you know, having studied psychology and helping a lot of clients to both reach their wellness and weight management to, uh, to be lacking because like finding your flow means that you need to be finding where your zone to be able to then do the things that you love. So mm -hmm. in my book, um, you know, I, I talk a fair bit about that and uh, the inner compass as well, which you will need to follow in order to find your purpose and passion. So in order to um, get my book, if anyone is interested, you can actually go onto my website, which is healthwealthformula.com. Fantastic. And of course, we'll put that link on um, the show notes. And to go to the show notes, all you need to do is go to ambitiousentrepreneurnetwork.com forward slash TCEO8, ambitiousentrepreneurnetwork.com forward slash TCEO8. Kitty, it's been an absolute pleasure speaking with you today. As we know, as business owners, there are so many balls that we need to juggle in our business and um, explaining to us and giving us some insights into the five dimensions of health. We can do a check in to ensure that not only are we growing our business, but that we're taking care of ourselves spiritually, socially, emotionally, mentally. And let me see if I can remember the last one. Physically. <laughs> <laughs> They're all very important. And when we do have an alignment in all of those five key areas, then um, all of those can, can certainly benefit us. And we know that we can just have that health and wealth in our lives. So thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you for having me, Emery. Now, for those of you who are listening today or watching the um, the recording, if you feel um, called to share your message and, and to really make an impact in the world, and maybe a podcast is something that you'd like to do in uh, 2018, then what I've done is created a free resource for you. It's got uh, my pre and post production workflow checklist, including all of the tools. There's some low cost tools, some free tools to get you started. Free training that you can access at annemariecross.com forward slash mini training, annemariecross.com forward slash mini training. Your message is important. Get it out there to make an impact in the lives of, um, of others. Kitty, before I go, what I'm doing with all of the guests is I'm saying a word of prayer for them. Would you allow me to do that for you too? Yes, thank you. Oh, thank you. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for the time that we could spend today with Kitty as she was explaining just how important those five areas, five dimensions of health is so important of course the spiritual component spending time with you um as kitty said she spends the first uh, day uh, her mornings with you to to really set the, the her compass on you and and what um you want for life thank you so much for supporting her and getting this message out and we 
pray that you'll continue to bless her, the work that she is doing, the impact that she is having in the world with her message. Will you bless her business too and the clients that she will serve and support moving forward this year? We, we just bless her and, and um, keep her in your thoughts. Thank you so much. And uh, we ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Kitty. And of course, um, for those listening and watching today, please reach out to Kitty and get her book and uh, certainly reach out to her as well. Thanks again, Kitty. Thank you. You've been listening to the Christian Entrepreneurs Podcast, brought to you by BeTheDifferenceMovement.com. Changing the world one message at a time. Do you feel called to influence real change with your message? Join our supportive community of like-minded influencers, thought leaders, and disruptors at www.bethedifferencemovement.com. That's bethedifferencemovement.com. Thank you.